Hello there from Atlanta, Fosdom 2021. I'm Nick Black, the primary author of Not Curses, an ambitious text user interface and character graphics library in the spirit of curses. I'm normally a compilers and high performance computing guy, definitely not graphics or UI oriented, but I'd written two large end curses programs and I was determined not to write another, hence Not Curses, which aims to have all the portability and robustness of the ubiquitous end curses, but also to move well beyond that library. It does not claim nor attempt source level compatibility with curses though it ought to be easy for any experienced Curses programmer to pick up. Of what do we speak when we say text user interfaces and character graphics? I define them by two properties. One, we're creating a visual rectilinear presentation, but we're drawing with a pre-made set of glyphs, a font, as opposed to pixels. I don't like to say characters because there's not a bijection between drawable glyphs and characters, as we'll see in a minute. Ideally, this is a fixed width font. All the glyphs occupy the same height and are at most integer multiples of some common width. Two, we're using stream-based I.O. rather than drawing to a memory mapped frame buffer. Examples include virtual consoles of Linux and FreeBSD, terminal emulators under X or Wayland, or even true hardware terminals. In addition to rendering a stream of glyphs, smart terminals interpret inline control sequences, which can among other things move the cursor and apply styles. Under Unicode, glyphs correspond to extended grapheme clusters and can be considered the atomic unit of visual display. The cursor ought move over them in one motion, and backspace ought destroy an EGC in its entirety. The glyphs available are a function of our encoding, our font, and our terminal. Control sequence availability is purely a function of our terminal, and is almost completely abstracted away by the term info library, of which not curses makes extensive use. So what's wrong with curses? After all, it's been around for over 40 years, making it one of the few pieces of a modern Unix system older than I am. Well, limited Unicode support, poor threading support, palette index color and a crafty color pair system, control via global variables and other issues. And curses is a superb implementation of curses and takes about as far as it can go. The limitations of curses are fundamental properties of its API. The design goals for a 21st century TUI library included one, being written and usable in C, but actively intended for safer languages. It's 2021. Pseudo just got pwned with a nostalgic heap exploit. C may be the lingua franca of Unix and system calls, and we do get great performance from it, but hopefully most client code is using something like Rust or even Python. Not Curses was actively designed with them in mind, and the wrappers were written alongside the core. Two modes to accommodate two major application styles. There's direct mode for line-driven CLIs using standard I.O., and rendered mode for full-screen apps. Ours is a multi-core era, and not curses is designed for multi-threaded use. This means that thread safety is well documented, and that the interfaces are designed for safety, yet maximum performance. I wanted to generalize drawing surface support. Not curses planes can be any size, far larger than and in any position relative to the visual area. Three independent channels exist for each rendered cell, a glyph, a foreground color, and a background color. A true 24-bit color support runs deep through the API, though they're often reduced to palette-based pseudo-color transparently to the client app to minimize consumed bandwidth. Perhaps most eye-catching is the quality multimedia support. Not Curses rides top FFmpeg or Open Image IO and uses state-of-the-art blitters to bring usable images and video to terminal apps. Like many other such libraries, there's a rich collection of pre-built widgets. And finally, performance has been a primary focus throughout development. There are 25 benchmarks in the demo application, and their timings are watched religiously. As just one example, NC Display renders images in about one-third of the time as Chaffa, despite using more advanced blitting. Direct mode is as simple as it gets, a means to interleave control sequences with standard I.O. The cursor can be moved, styles can be set, but output is primarily driven through good old printf. That doesn't mean we can't do some pretty impressive things. Here's NCLS, a file listing utility that displays multimedia when found. Now, rendered mode is where Not Curses really shines and represents true advance over existing solutions. It operates similarly to OpenGL. Objects are prepared and arranged and then rendered on block to a frame. Frames are rasterized into streams of glyphs and control sequences and written atomically to the terminal. It is only at this time that the display changes. Output is carefully optimized so that only the minimal string is written to the terminal and the objects forming the frame retain their state across calls. This operating mode can easily result in thousands of frames per second, far beyond the capacities of any known display technology. When you give up for this power is the ability to use standard I.O. All output needs to be run through not curses, because not curses needs to have a correct idea of what's on the screen. This is driven through the not curses call NC pile render, which generates a frame in memory. While pile cannot be modified during the render operation, different piles can be freely modified by multiple threads. 
The pile is rendered using the painter's algorithm. Initially, all cells in the visual area are considered unsolved. Starting from the top plane, any intersecting unsolved cell is analyzed. The glyph channel is solved upon the first encounter with a glyph. The foreground and background colors are solved upon hitting an opaque color. Translucent colors are blended. A cell is solved when all three of these channels are solved. There's no need to use multiple piles except to expose parallelism, though they can be convenient for multimodal UIs. Each rendered mode context contains one or more piles, defined by their visual area and by their component planes. The pile provides a total ordering in the form of a z-axis and the directed acyclic binding forest. The binding forest represents grouping or ownership. It is possible to move, reparent, or destroy an entire subtree, and resize callbacks propagate down through binding trees. As mentioned earlier, while rendering a pile, it is not permitted to mutate it, nor any of its planes. Furthermore, only one thread may change the ordering or binding of planes at a time within a pile. The content of distinct planes, however, may be freely mutated by multiple threads. A pile is destroyed implicitly when its last plane is destroyed or reparented. A pile is created when a tree of planes is reparented to null. What are these planes? Well, they're the fundamental drawing surface of knot curses. All output is placed on the planes. Each knot curse's context starts with the standard plane, which is always the size of the visual area and cannot be destroyed, reparented, nor moved along the x or y axis. It is thus due to this plane that we always have at least one pile. A plane is defined by its geometry and its origins, its active colors and style, a matrix of cells and an associated EGC pool, we'll get to them in a minute, a user-managed opaque pointer and name, a resize callback function, virtual cursor location, and a default cell. It is possible to retrieve the contents of a plane, and a plane can be duplicated wholesale or turned into a visual to blend onto other planes. It is entirely possible to have thousands of planes in a pile without performance degradation, or thousands of planes in thousands of piles. As mentioned, each plane has a matrix of cells, and a rendered frame is likewise represented as a matrix of cells. And indeed, rendering can be thought of as projecting the three-dimensional pile onto a single plane, and there's actually a function in C plane merge that does exactly that. Cells are tightly packed. Each cell is exactly 16 bytes, plus possible spillover for an EGC pool. Eight of these bytes are given over to two 32-bit channels, one for the foreground and one for the back. Two bytes are taken by the 16-bit style mask, that's italics, underscore, reverse video, blink, etc. Another byte caches the column width of its EGC. We need that regularly and we don't have to go to libc. Finally, the remaining five bytes can be interpreted in one of two ways, either as a null terminated UTF-8 encoded C string or as a 24-bit index into the EGC pool. All currently defined Unicode code points mapped four or fewer UTF-8 bytes. Any EGC that can fit the four G cluster bytes is directly inlined. The eight bits of the backstop are always zero, and thus such an EGC is always a valid C string. Longer EGCs are written into the EGC pool, and an index is stored in the G cluster instead. Outside of pathological cases, almost every EGC gets inlined. The last data structure essential to understanding and using not curses is the channel. Channels usually come in pairs, two 32-bit channels in a 64-bit structure. Now, each channel encodes at a given time either 24-bit RGB, 8-bit palette index, or the fact that it's a default color. There's also two bits of quote-unquote alpha. Um, this is actually opaque, blend, transparent, or high contrast. There are four reserved bits uh, marked as zero in this diagram. Those are used by internal not curses bookkeeping for optimization. You can't touch those. We've spoken about design goals and data organization, but how do we drive actual output? We are a text library, and writing text is the most basic operation provided. Nine families of functions are provided to accomplish this in the most convenient way. The putc family writes a cell, and thus one EGC, using the channels and style contained therein. All other families we're going to describe will use the plane's active channels and style. Putcar writes a single 7-bit ASCII car as a complete EGC. Whether car is signed or unsigned is implementation dependent in C, but ASCII is only a 7-bit character set, so we're safe. Putwc writes a single wide character as an EGC. A wide character can usually represent one Unicode code point, though should you be so unfortunate as to code for a platform with 16-bit watch R, it can only represent characters from the basic multilingual plane. Write an arbitrary EGC made up of UTF-8 bytes with put EGC, or made up of multiple wide cars with put WEGC. Write an entire series of EGCs out with put stir or put WSTIR, where again, put stir is UTF-8 encoded input. 
Finally, formatted output can be written with NC Plane Printf and NC Plane VPrintf with their usual C semantics. Now for each one of these, I refer to them as families because there's at least four functions in there. There's the basic one which writes at the current virtual cursor position. There's one suffixed with yx that uh, also accepts x and y parameters, goes there first, and then writes. There's aligned, which takes an aligned parameter, left, right, or center, and places it there. Finally, there's stained, which retains the current styling and coloring, as opposed to rewriting it using styling and coloring of the plane. Boxes can be specified with some starting location and geometry. Six specified NC cells, including the style and channels, one for each of the four corners, one for horizontal lines, and one for vertical lines. There's the ability to leave out arbitrary edges or corners, and the ability to interpolate between corner channels. Simple, double, and rounded prepared variants come included, using all the capabilities of Unicode. NC plane parameter is prepared geometry for a given plane. NC plane gradient fills a rectangular area with a gradient in EGC. NC plane polyfill replaces a region of the same EGC with an NC cell. Multimedia, and this is where we really start to leave the competition behind. I uh, currently support both FFmpeg and OpenImage.io, GStreamer is coming. Multimedia backend is chosen at compile time, and applications can link against only libnotcurse's core if they don't require multimedia backend. That way there's no dependency chain pulled in, and it's a lighter binary. NC visual objects can be created with NC visual from file, that opens and decodes arbitrary files. NC visual from RGBA, which takes decoded RGBA from memory, or NC visual from plane, which creates, as we said earlier, an NC plane visual that you can blend onto other planes. Those latter two don't need multimedia support, by the way, they just use this common NC visual object. Uh, I'm going to let this output speak for itself for a few seconds here. This is Umlaut Design's pile driver demo, pretty famous. You can see the high performance we're able to get. Your terminal ready for this? Media pixels are converted to character graphics via Blitter. The general state of the art is the half block blitter, but not curses has introduced two beyond it in the quad blitter and sex blitter. The half block blitter does have two nice properties. It affects a pixel aspect ratio of 1 to 1 and lossless color conversion. Since a given cell can only have a foreground and a background color, there's unavoidable interpolation in higher resolution blitters. Empirically, and especially for large images, the 64 glyph sex blitter produces the best output. The braille blitter doesn't work well for most media due to how braille is drawn versus block characters and fonts, but it's great for plots, which makes use of the same blitters we just saw, plus a few more. Slow overhead not curses plots can be oriented in any direction. They implement auto-scaling and they reuse the general gradient code to color both linear and exponential graphs. All image blitters are available, plus the 4-way and 8-way leveled plots. A 5-row 8-way plot supports a full 40 levels. Braille gives you only half the resolution of an 8-way along the dependent axis, but double the resolution on an independent axis, facilitating the display of a longer or more granular range. And they look great! Available widgets include selector, multi-selector, a tree selector, menus, progress bars. These can be heavily customized because in each case you're just handing them an NC plane that the widget is then drawn on. It can all be handled using standard NC plane infrastructure. Let's finish this up by looking at some actual not curses applications. These first two were both end curses programs, large ones, which I ported last year. Moving from end curses to not curses cut down my total lines of UI code by about 50% in each case. The Growlight Disk Manager has features like IO path bandwidth discovery and native ZFS support. It's present in several distributions, and you can probably grab it and run it today. The Omphalos Network Discovery and Attack Tool. It's a beloved little project of mine, but I'm frankly hesitant to package it. Anybody who's watched two decades of Wireshark CVEs probably agrees that the world doesn't need yet another C program sitting on a raw packet socket. My next two planned big not cursor projects, and these would be not cursor apps from the ground up, include an SDR tool, software defined radio, and a Debian package manager built atop my fast raptorial suite. Thanks a lot for your time. I hope it's been informative. Go watch the demo and hack on. Free hearts, free software, free minds. Ah!